Downtown Minneapolis is still struggling to bounce back from the unrest and the pandemic that's dictated the last 18 months here. And the downtown council says workers in the uh, workers in office, restaurant diners, hotel occupancy are all less than half the levels seen before the pandemic began, really in March 2020. This as crime is on the rise. Sheila Nazad. Let's start with you. Why should people visit downtown Minneapolis right now? And what would you do to reinvigorate the downtown landscape? You have one minute to answer. Yes, I think that we need to make downtown a place that everyone wants to be and have things that everyone can afford to do. And that's why as mayor, I would support more free public programming, things to do downtown, art shows, concerts, things that provide activities for our families. And after they go to that concert, maybe they'll go to a restaurant downtown. Maybe they'll go catch a show at First Avenue. These are the ways that we're gonna help reinvigorate downtown in a way that really starts with the people too. And, and it is available to working class folks who are all over the city wanting to come together. And I will also work with the businesses of downtown to figure out what does is, what is post-pandemic business look like? What supports do we need from the city to move towards more cooperative models, to move towards hybrid, virtual, and in-person? All of these are ways that we can rebuild downtown together in a way that is fun and safe and prosperous. Ms. Knuth, the same question to you in one minute, please. Why should people visit downtown and what as mayor would you do to, to bring it back? Yeah, so just last week, I released my economic vitality plan. It includes an explicit section about downtown. Downtown is an essential part of the dynamism and the success of Minneapolis and frankly, the state of Minnesota overall. We are coming through a pandemic. And at this point in our city's history, it is important for the mayor to not have every answer. I think anyone who says they have every answer in downtown is not being honest with you, but to lead the work together with the downtown council, with the downtown workers council, with residents, with business owners, with service providers and cultural organizations to come together to create the programming, the investment and the economic opportunity to make sure our downtown, we don't leave it behind, we don't forget about it, but we absolutely make it an important central part of who we are as Minneapolis and the state of Minnesota overall. Mayor Fry, the same question to you. You have one minute, please. Well, as mayor, it's not good enough to just say we need to come together. As mayor, you need to make decisions and at times painful ones. Uh, and it's no secret to anyone, we've had a global pandemic over this last year and a half. And, you know, I stand by the decision to be the first city in the state to institute a mask mandate, the first city in the state to close down bars and restaurants. Why? Because it was going to save lives. And at the same time, we need to reignite our downtown because our entire city depends on it. You will not have a world-class city without a world-class downtown, and you will not have a world-class downtown unless it's safe and people feel safe. Both the reality and the perception of safety needs to be there. I'll also note the importance of downtown is critical because other social services depend on the property taxes that come from some of those large buildings. You need to provide affordable housing. You need to provide the necessary social service and that requires a successful downtown. So of course we need to listen to the epidemiologists, but we need to lock arms and reignite our city's economy. Mr. Awed, please answer in 60 seconds. What would you want to do as mayor to bring downtown Minneapolis back? Yeah, thank you for that question. I mean, I'm of East African origin, so business is something that really drives our community and our culture. Uh, and to that point, I mean, downtown is really the engine for the city's tax base. Um, we do need to be creative in how we actually make sure that we diversify it. I and mean, there's a lot of vacant you know, property that's going to be there. How do we, you know, you know, make bridges between that? How do we make sure to bring and champion great events? I think all of these things matter and who that person, the messenger matters in that. I'm a great, I would say, person that wants to act 
actually champion the city of Minneapolis in its downtown core, make sure that it's accessible for traffic, make sure that it's beautiful, actually make the proper investments, that the aesthetics are good. That means trees, trees, trees. Uh, for me, I'm thinking about it as, as a way to highlight our cultural diversity in the city of Minneapolis. And I don't think that should be just relegated to Lake Street, but we should bring that diversity downtown a little bit more in a visible way. We have an opportunity to do that. And with my leadership, hopefully, I think I can I can bridge those gaps in different culture, hopefully, to, to make our city more beautiful and inclusive. A quick follow-up here, Mayor Fry. You mentioned um, how social services depend on downtown property taxes. Obviously, the pandemic has changed the way we work. Many people working from home and not using perhaps office spaces that they once were familiar with every single day. So, given that changing landscape, I'm going to give you uh, for each 30 seconds to just um, respond how you would adapt to that kind of changing uh, work work environment for many of the offices downtown. Mayor Fry. To a certain extent, this concept of remote working uh, was inevitable, but I think it was expedited probably five to eight years by COVID-19. That being said, I do think that our downtown will come back in fine form. And by the way, we are ahead of several other cities of comparable size towards that end. Now, at the same time, I think we do have to reinvent how we use a number of different spaces, whether that's commercial, making sure it's more cooperative oriented rather than office, or it's retail, making sure that we're serving small and local businesses throughout our city. We can't be afraid to take the next step in where our economy is going right now. Uh, and we've been reaching out to business owners and workers alike to make sure we're heading right there. Thank you, Mayor Fry. Uh, Sheila Najad, please uh, give your answer to that question. How do you adapt to changing uh, work environments? Absolutely. So I think that we need to hear from people in Minneapolis about what they need right now. While big corporations have moved more towards hybrid models, I do hear a lot of desire for co-working spaces. Some folks, they're zoomed out, they're ready to be in person. So some of these spaces, we might shift to more co-working models, more cooperative models, and also putting in community centers and youth centers downtown. So again, we bring people together so that they can enjoy our downtown and help rebuild it. Ms. Knuth, your answer, please. Yeah, I think we need to make a downtown that's dynamic coming out of the pandemic. And that involves recognizing that it's not gonna be the same kind of work environment going forward. And that's okay. You know, downtown doesn't look the way it what did 10 years ago. I don't live downtown, but I grocery shop down there almost every week. I go to Target downtown. And when I've been out listening to downtown residents, to downtown business owners, what I hear is a need on focus, a uh, focus on safety and dynamic activities and making sure we're partnering with the many different groups and users that are part of making our downtown a success. Mr. Awed, your answer, please. I am so sorry. I apologize. Um, but what I was going to say was, yeah, so I mean, in terms of investments within our BIPOC community, really being able to open those shop fronts. But as this, you know, as this change happens, I think we also need to be cautious of how to unlock the potential of our BIPOC businesses and really making sure to have them as industry leaders. I think there's great potential there. Uh, but uh, for me, I think we can, we have a lot of potential to make sure to have cultural uh, exchanges and, and, and we have the proper investments in apartments and small businesses. All right. Thank you all for your questions.